Welcome to our lecture online. There's nothing like a few examples to help us understand concepts such as the curl and here we have a very interesting example. Notice that the magnitude of the vector field increases to the right as we go up in the value for y and it increases then in the negative direction as we go down below the x-axis. You can see that vector field is to the left below the y-axis to the right but it looks like it follows a linear path. So since the curl deals with circulation, does this indeed have circulation? Is there indeed a curl that's non-zero in this particular case? Well, actually it does. It does have a curl. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the curl of that vector field. But first we're going to find the direction of the vector field, then we're going to find the magnitude, and then we're actually going to find the curl. So starting with the direction, if I use my right hand and I curl my fingers up here in the direction of the vector field and then here I see the, the direction going this way, it looks like I can simulate that curling action by letting my fingers go from the top uh, direction down to the bottom direction. You can see that there appears to be a circulation that is clockwise and therefore my thumb points in the negative z direction. So, as far as direction is concerned, it looks like the direction is in the negative z direction. So we're going to end up with something in the, in, the order, uh, in the order of a negative k direction. What about the magnitude? Well, what I can do here is I can pick a point and then go around a path in a counterclockwise direction. And notice that over here I go across the vector field, here I go in the opposite direction of the vector field, here I go in the same direction as the vector field. But when we talk about the magnitude, remember we can talk about the magnitude, the magnitude can be found by saying that it's equal to the change in the vector field when I go into the x direction plus the change in the vector field when I go in the y direction divided by the radius of the circulation. So in this case, let's assume that the radius here is equal to one unit. I'm going to move one unit away from some initial point right here. And first I'm going to move one unit into the x direction. If I move one unit to the right along this path right here, notice that the magnitude of the vector field doesn't change at all. If I go from there to there to there to there, anywhere along this line, the magnitude of the vector field does not change. So in this case, the change in the x direction when I move one unit in the x direction is equal to zero. But now I'm going to move in the y direction. When I move up from there to there, notice that the magnitude of the vector field increases. But also notice that the direction of the vector field as I move in the positive y direction is opposite to the direction of my circulation. So therefore I need to add a negative quantity. It changes by one unit because if I let y go for example from 2 to 3 it changes by one unit. So if I move one unit in the direction of the positive y direction the magnitude of the vector field changes by one unit but since it's in the opposite direction to the circulation I add a negative unit, so this would be plus a negative 1, and I divide that by the radius of motion. I moved one unit in this direction, one unit in that direction. The radius of motion is one unit, so I divide by 1. That means that the magnitude is equal to 1, but it's in the negative direction. So the magnitude is 1, but it's negative direction because we already realized that the circulation is indeed in a clockwise direction rather than a counterclockwise direction. And so to prove all this now, let's go ahead and calculate the actual curl for this particular example. So the curl of F is equal to the del operator cross product with the vector field, which is equal to, so we have an I, a J, and a K, the partial with respect to X, partial with respect to Y, partial with respect to z. The x component is y, the y component is 0, and the z component is 0. That of course makes it a lot easier to figure out the curl. So this becomes equal to i times the partial of y, the partial with respect to y of 0, 
minus the partial uh, with respect to zero of zero as well, because see, it's the partial with respect to y of this minus the partial with respect to z of this. And then minus j, because we alternate signs, this is plus, this is minus, this is plus, so minus j times the partial with respect to x of zero minus the partial with respect to z of y, because partial of z with respect to y, right here. And then finally, plus k times the partial with respect to x of 0 minus the partial with respect to y of y. And notice that this becomes 0, this becomes 0, and this becomes, well, this is 0, but this is a minus 1. So this is equal to 0 in the i direction plus 0 in the j direction minus 1 in the k direction. So notice, again, so this is equal to minus 1k. So notice the magnitude is 1, as we predicted. The sign is negative because the circulation is clockwise. And so you can see that that's how we figure out the direction of the circulation, which means we can then figure out the direction of the curl. And then we can also find the magnitude of the curl by moving a certain distance in the x direction, a certain distance in the y direction, and see how much the magnitude of the vector field changes. And that's how it's done.